expert. I'm just trying to change people's perspectives, okay man? Is that all good? Awesome. Hello! Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. You guys, Vert has been enjoying hanging out during the videos lately, and I could not be happier. And having him here is just such a calming energy. He's currently sleeping on a t-shirt that I put out before I took a shower today to plot my hair with, and then I got out of the shower and he was just laying on it like a little angel, and it's, oh, he's just so sweet. I love him so much. I'm so happy he's here. I'm gonna try really hard not to be too loud and disturbing to him because he's just sleeping like a little angel, and I just love him so darn much. It's so hard not to scream every second of the day. But that's not what this video is about. You did not click on this video to listen to me scream and shout about how stinking cute Bird is. No, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in makeup lies I used to believe. So I got this video idea when I was looking back at old pictures of myself from like last year, two years ago, because I like to do that every once in a while. I like to see my makeup progress, you know? It's a really good thing to do. I highly recommend it if you've recently got into makeup, even if you've only gotten into it within the last year. Look at pictures of yourself from like two months ago and you'll be blown away by your progress. It is so, so cool. But I was looking at old pictures of myself wearing makeup and it got me thinking about a lot of things that I used to think about makeup that I now know are not true at all. So my hope with this video is that by talking about makeup lies that I used to believe, I can hopefully bust some myths that maybe you still believe and I can help you, you know, stop wasting your time with certain makeup products. So if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to hear about a bunch of makeup lies that aren't true, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching because it's coming at you right now. So the first makeup myth that I would like to bust here today is that BB creams slash CC creams offer a lighter, more natural looking coverage. And well, I'm sure this is true for some BB creams and CC creams and tinted moisturizers that is included in this category too. It's definitely not a one-off rule at all. Now when I first started getting into makeup, anything with the word foundation in it sent me sprinting in the other direction. And that's because I felt like with my my dry skin foundation was just gonna look bad. And so I felt like moving towards BB creams, CC creams, tinted moisturizers, that was gonna give me a more hydrating, light coverage that was just gonna help my sensitive dry skin thrive. And uh, yeah, I was wrong. And I'm here to tell you that even if you're not looking for a high coverage complexion product, you can still use foundation. Foundation does not mean drying, cakey. It can with certain foundations, but it doesn't have have to. And a lot of times these products that are called tinted moisturizers and BB creams and CC creams are just foundations that are called BB creams and CC creams. Like a lot of the time it's really just a label and it doesn't really mean anything. So I've really changed my perspective on complexion products and I like to look at them from more of a standpoint of what ingredients do they have? What type of coverage are they claiming to offer? What's the finish? Is it natural, satin, matte, dewy, glowy? Rather than looking for foundation versus is tinted moisturizer and let me show you an example right here of why you can't just assume that a tinted moisturizer is a lighter more natural coverage and I will show you with my first aid beauty tinted moisturizer and I'll do a swatch of that next to my rare beauty foundation which is marketed as a foundation so we're comparing a foundation to a tinted moisturizer now I'm gonna kind of like rub them out so you can see them in more of a spot I'm wearing the rare beauty foundation today by the way it's so pretty I love it so much all right and here they are next to each other can you even tell which one is which do they look any different to you look the finishes give the same exact thing they're both incredibly glowy they both offer a very similar coverage and one is marketed as a foundation and one is marketed as a tinted moisturizer therefore proving my point that there's no real difference and you don't need to avoid words like foundation to get a light coverage. And some tinted moisturizers, I really like this First Aid Beauty tinted moisturizer. It truly does offer a nice light coverage, but I've tried BB creams from the drugstore. The first one I ever bought from the drugstore was this Revlon BB cream. I'll put it on the screen. 
avoid this at all costs. I'm not kidding. Don't even look at this in the drugstore because somehow you'll end up looking cakey just by looking at it because this is the cakiest face product I think I've ever used. One, the shades are really, really weird. I'm pretty sure I bought their lightest shade and it was straight up orange on me, but it also pilled. It was cakey. It was so, so gross. And at the time I was flabbergasted. I was like, what the heck? This is supposed to be a BB cream, a tainted moisturizer. Why is it rejecting my face? This is not what moisturizers are supposed to do. And that all, you know, I just keep coming back to the same point that these are just words. They don't mean that they're going to perform like a moisturizer. Some actually do. First Aid Beauty is like mostly a skincare brand that has some makeup too. So that's why I feel like their tinted moisturizer actually works like a tinted moisturizer. But don't think that you're getting a nice hydrating skincare experience just because something is called a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer. And uh, yeah, that is a makeup lie that I believed for a long, long time. All right, let's move on to another Another makeup myth that I used to believe in and that is that concealer is the only way to do a cut crease. Yay, it's not true. That is such an exciting thing to not be true that I really only realized recently. So I'm so excited to share this one with you because I avoided cut creases like the plague for years. I was like, I don't like working with liquid concealer. I had tried it before. It was a dang old mess. I'm not saying it can't work for everyone. I'm sure that many of you watching this video are absolute rock stars with liquid concealer and can cut a crease like nobody's business, but I bust this myth for those of us who can't do that, okay? And I'm here to tell you that you can do a cut crease with other products, one of those products being a pomade. I have this one from KVD Beauty, but I'm sure there are other brands that also make pomades. I really like the KVD ones because they're a multi-use product, so you can use it as eyeshadow, you can use it as a base, you can use it in your eyebrows, so I really like that about these pomades. But what's so great about a pomade that a liquid concealer can't offer is the thickness of it, the viscosity of it. And if you also struggle with liquid concealer doing cut creases like I do, you know that's like the worst part is just how liquidy it is, how it seems to get everywhere. But what I love about a pomade is how thick it is. It really sticks in the shape that you put it on. You don't need to do a ton of shaping on your own because if you stamp this on your lid, it's going to stay wherever you put it and it's not going to drip, which is awesome. I'm going to show you an example example of a cut crease that I did with this pomade. This one right here, I did this for my Mean Girls video and I was floored. This was my first time trying this tip and I was absolutely blown away. All I had to do was take like a rounded brush. Of course, mine's covered in purple right now because I did a purple look with it recently, but just take a little C-shaped brush like this and you just dip it into your pomade and you just stamp it in the shape that you want it to be. You just do a little boop, 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 boop in your eyes and it'll stay exactly where it is. And what I also like about pomades is that they do dry down, but you do have a moment to put a shimmer over it if you want to make it a shimmery cut crease, which is always such a pretty look. So I love that about using these pomades. And I don't know, I feel like I'm just trying to shout this from the rooftops to everybody that I can because cut creases are so polarizing. It feels like you have to be such a professional makeup artist to do a cut crease sometimes. And uh, you don't because if you use this pomade, it's way more user friendly. I'm super open to hearing what pomades you guys like. You could use a gel liner too. Like, you know, I know ColourPop makes those cream gel liners in the little pots. That's a very similar consistency to these pomades. So you could definitely use that as a more affordable option. But I just think using something with some more thickness, with some more viscosity makes doing cut creases so much easier and it makes them so much more approachable. So that's definitely a makeup lie that I used to believe was that cut creases could only be done with liquid concealers. And now I know that that's just not true. Now, while we're talking about things about liquid concealer that I used to believe that weren't true. Uh, let's, let's call myself out once again, shall we? Another makeup lie that I used to believe is that all liquid concealers are drying and not suitable for dry skin. And, uh, yeah, I've been proven wrong. I've been absolutely proven wrong. That is not true at all. While I do still believe that a lot of liquid concealers are too drying for dry skin, especially if they claim to have a very high coverage matte finish, yeah, I stand by that being true. But you can't rule out all liquid concealers altogether, and I want to recommend one for you to try if you also are a dry skin friend like me, and that is the First Aid Beauty Bendy Avocado Concealer. This concealer 
blew my mind. It changed everything for me. It's the concealer I'm wearing today. Do my under eyes look dry? I sure hope not because I'm trying to prove a point that they aren't. But I ended up trying this concealer because Samantha Ravindahl recommended it. And if you don't, if you somehow don't know Samantha Ravindahl, she's incredible. She's an incredibly talented makeup artist and she's so funny and I just like her so much. But she also has dry on the more sensitive side skin. And she had been recommending this product for a few years and I finally gave it a try and I'm like, what the heck was I waiting for for all this? This time because Samantha has struck gold with this product and what I think really separates this concealer from other liquid concealers that I've tried is the dry down. The way it dries down is so hard to describe because it's almost like it doesn't. It does, but it's it's almost like it doesn't because it never does that dry down thing where you can see like it's it changes appearance. You know how a lot of times liquid concealers can have like a liquid to powder dry down? This one does not. It almost acts like a foundation in a sense in the way that it dries down, like a nice natural hydrating finish foundation. I'm going to see if I can demonstrate on my hand. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but again, it's also on my eyes. You can see it goes on like a liquid but what I also really like about this is you see how I'm barely freaking touching this and it just blends out so seamlessly that was real time I didn't speed that up or anything it just blends out so seamlessly and yeah it's not the highest coverage concealer in the world I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie to you we're, we're busting makeup lies we're not spreading more of them but it's not the highest coverage concealer in the world but it's very brightening so I feel like it almost gives the illusion of being more high coverage like I said it is on my under eyes today and I do feel like it did a pretty good job of covering I do have a scar under this eye over here that's usually a good test for me for how much uh, concealer covers and I feel like you can't see it I feel like this concealer still gives a very nice coverage over here and it's mostly due to that brightening effect that it has and I just love the way it dries down I just love the way this blends out it's just it's so good and it totally changed my mind on dry skin people not being able to use liquid concealers we can myth busted all right so the next makeup lie that I believed for a long time that I now that was no longer true is that eyeshadow has to be expensive to be a good formula. In this one you're probably thinking like freaking obviously of course like we all know that and I know I know I know we all know that but I do feel like a lot of us do still kind of have this, you know, preconceived notion that expensive eyeshadows are better. So I guess that's more of the myth I'm trying to bust is that expensive eyeshadows are better. No, 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 not always true. And I think a big reason a lot of us believe this is because we have a lot of these artistry brands like Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath, which have very expensive eyeshadows. However, I think when it comes down to it, if you think about what an eyeshadow is, it's a pigment. Some are actually pressed pigments, some are pigments mixed with other things to make them easier to blend, but at the end of the day, they're pigments, and pigments are not very expensive. The only time that they tend to get very expensive is when you get into the multi-chrome department, because of course you're paying for different chromes, you're paying for different types of shadows all mixed together, and that's a more difficult formula to get right. But I think I think when you're looking at mattes and when you're looking at shimmers, I just, I, I don't see where they're getting this priciness. Hello, editing me here. I realize I'm sounding a little naive in this part of the video and uh, I just want to clarify that I understand that some pigments are more finely milled and they're made in countries where they use a higher quality of products. Like I totally understand that things can be more expensive for that reason. I'm just saying I don't think those qualities are always necessary for an eyeshadow to perform well. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't still buy from these artistry brands like Pat McGrath and Natasha Denota because I think if you find a formula that you love and it works for you, absolutely go for it. And of course that luxurious packaging definitely plays a role too. I don't know, I really hope I'm making sense with this one. I'm bringing up this makeup myth because I remember two years ago when I bought the Modern Renaissance palette, I remember saying to my boyfriend, like, I now understand why people buy expensive eyeshadow because it's better, it works better, it's easier to work with. Because at that time, I had only been using ColourPop before and like some drugstore brands, some Revlon, some e.l.f. and whatnot. And when I bought this ABH palette, I was like, wow, I fully understand why people spend $45 on these eyeshadow palettes. They are much better than the other palettes. But 
I, de I rescind that. I take that back. It's simply not true. I had not tried any indie makeup brands at the time, so I did not realize that you don't have to charge $45 for an eyeshadow palette for it to be good. So if you are someone who is still stuck in that notion, maybe you have bought a $45 eyeshadow palette and it's the best one you've ever bought, that's great. Still enjoy that eyeshadow palette. I'm just letting you know, don't be afraid to buy a $20 eyeshadow palette from an indie makeup brand or a drugstore brand because you don't think it's gonna be as good. Because since buying that Modern Renaissance palette, one, I decluttered it like a year and a half ago, like six months later, because I just tried so many other ones better than that. But also because I realized that there were formulas even better than that for less money. So I don't know. Again, I feel like I'm rambling all over the place with this particular point, but if I can even just affect one person who just bought a very expensive eyeshadow palette and who is about to tell themselves that the reason it was expensive is because it's better quality, I'm telling you, they're still overcharging you. They're absolutely overcharging you. It did not cost them that much to make. They're charging you for packaging and also for the name. But you know, uh, let me recommend a few indie makeup brands for you to try now. If you're looking for some high quality eyeshadows that aren't gonna cost you a ton of money but are gonna be incredible quality, one of them being Midas Cosmetics. They are currently having a huge sale on their website too. I am a Midas affiliate, but you can't use my affiliate code with the sale, so I really don't benefit at all by telling you this, but they're having a huge sale on their website right now. All of their eyeshadow formulas are absolutely incredible, so buttery, so easy to blend, beautiful shimmer formula. I even like their pressed glitter formula, and I don't really like any pressed glitter formulas, so that's a great brand to try and very affordable and also having a huge sale right now. Another brand that has really high quality quality eyeshadows for a low price is Beauty Bay. I only recently tried them. The Wilderness Palette is the first thing I've ever tried from them, but it's such high quality eyeshadow for an incredible price. I paid $15 for this freaking incredible eyeshadow that has some of the best shimmer formulas I've ever used. It is unfreaking believable how good Beauty Bay eyeshadows are. I wish I tried them earlier, but this is another brand that's very affordable and very, very high quality that I recommend that you check out. And there's a ton of other indie makeup brands that also have great eyeshadow palettes, feel free to leave some comments, you know, let people know what are some other good indie makeup brands or more affordable makeup brands that have a great eyeshadow formula because I don't think anybody should have to spend $100 on an eyeshadow palette unless you really want to. But just know that eyeshadow does not need to be really expensive to be good and that is a lie that I absolutely used to believe and now no longer. Okay, and the last makeup myth that I'm going to bust for you here today, I have so many more that I could do, so let me know if you like this type of video and I'll make it a series, but the last makeup myth that I want to bust here today is that all liquid matte lipsticks are drying. It's not true. It's totally not true and once you realize it's not true, you are going to expand your world. I know, 2016, 2017 left a lot of us feeling scorned. Even if you weren't into makeup at the time, I'm sure you remember the liquid lipstick craze and how we all just had like dry, crusty, purple gray lips all the time for like two years there, but don't let those memories deter you from ever buying a liquid lipstick again because they don't have to be that drying. One, you can take those liquid lipstick formulas and make them less drying by putting on a lip mask underneath. Granted, that doesn't work with all formulas, so, you know, if that doesn't work, don't come for me, okay? But I want to tell you about some liquid lipstick formulas that aren't drying and won't dry the heck out of your lips. One brand, which I feel like is so underrated and deserves to be talked about more, they have great affordable eyeshadows too, is Colored Rain. I have this liquid lipstick right here. I actually have a few shades from them. I have a purple one too that's really pretty. This is the best liquid lipstick formula that I have ever used, liquid matte lipstick formula that I've ever used because it goes on so nice and opaque, but the texture of it is so good. Like you'll be able to tell as soon as you put it on your lips that this is not going to be a drying formula. I mean, I just did a quick swipe swipe there and you already have full coverage with it, but it doesn't dry down feeling drying. It's amazing. I don't know how it works. It really feels like satin, but it does dry down completely matte. I tend to still put a lip mask on underneath just because I, I like to have a lip mask on underneath all of my lip products. I even have lip masks on under my glosses sometimes, but you don't need to because it's just not that drying. It's amazing. I don't know what they do over there at Colored Rain, but it doesn't have to be drying. That shade is called Electric Rain, by the way. It's a beautiful orangey red. And then this shade is called Bodacious, and it's a beautiful purple if you want to get a little bold with your liquid lipsticks. They have a million shades, though. Literally any shade you could possibly imagine. 
Imagine Colored Rain has, and they are at a good price point, and it's a really, really good formula, and I just love these so much. The purple one probably isn't dry yet, but I bet the red one is dry. Okay, no, it's actually not completely dry yet. I think that's what makes them good, because they don't dry down immediately, which if you remember 2016, you know that you would be like halfway through your first swipe and it was already dry, so I feel like a slower dry down isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like if something takes a couple minutes to dry down, that's probably good. That probably means that your lips aren't gonna feel like like in two seconds. I don't is supposed to let you know that's that's dry. That's the noise for drying, okay? <laughs> but these don't leave my lips feeling like that. They feel very nice. And another great liquid lipstick formula, which this is actually a lip stain, it's not a lipstick, but I talked about this in my fall favorites video, is the Alva Matte Lip Stain Formula from Odin's Eye. This is another great formula. It's called a lip stain, but you can fully build it up to be opaque if you want it to be. This shade, Ripe Papaya, is so, so pretty, so cute for fall. But this is another one that could be really drying but it isn't it just isn't this one I do need to wear a lip mask under I will be honest unlike the colored rain ones where you can kind of like do with or without it this one does require a lip mask underneath or a lip balm you know just something a little hydrating underneath but once you put that on this dries down and stays on but doesn't leave your lips looking dry and crusty. It is so, so nice. I am such a big fan of this Alva Matte Lip Formula. They have a cream formula too, a cream stain that doesn't dry down all the way, so that's a good option too. But yeah, this is another great one that is a matte product that doesn't dry the heck out of my lips. It's amazing. I spent years, after 2017, I was scorned. I was like, don't even come in my direction with a liquid lipstick. Don't even talk to me about liquid lipstick. But now I am a changed woman because I have found formulas that are both matte and not drying. And sometimes a matte look is what I'm going for, especially in the fall. I feel like I just, I like a matte look in the fall. So yeah, all matte liquid lipsticks being super drying is another makeup myth that I used to believe and no longer do. And with that, we have reached the end of the video. Those are all of the makeup lies that I'm going to be breaking apart here today, letting you know that they're not true. I hope that you could have learned something, even if, you know, you don't have to trust me to educate, you know, go test these things out for yourself. See if they're true and report back to me. Let me know. But I hope that I could at least give you a chance to expand your mind, maybe change your perspective a little bit, especially with those BB creams. I spent years trying to find a BB cream that works for me, and finally one day I just said, okay, I'll give a foundation a chance, and my mind was blown at the lack of different and how sometimes the foundations were even better. So that's like my big one. Like if you can just take one thing away from this, let it be not to fear the foundation. Don't fear the foundation, free the foundation. But please feel free to share some of your own makeup lies that you used to believe in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Maybe you can educate us in the comments. Maybe there's a lie that I'm still actively believing or someone else is still actively believing that you can bust for us. And of course, makeup isn't a one size fits all and some things might work for me that don't work for you, so don't take any of these as hard and fast rules. Bert over here is like, oh no, you're setting yourself up. If something doesn't work for someone, they're gonna be upset. Bert, I'm just trying to change people's perspectives, okay man? We're just over here trying to change perspectives and try to get people to expand their minds. Is that all good? Awesome. But I thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Wednesdays, I do live streams. I've done two of them so far, and I've had a freaking blast in both of them. I live stream at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'd love to have you join me. Check out my description box for all of the makeup on my face today. Also, in my description box, I will have a bunch of Black Lives Matter resources, resources to support the Asian American community, and resources to support the LGBTQ plus community. So please check those out if you haven't yet. And I uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like sashaying over here. All right, bye.